everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. There are now lots of substrate options for creating alcohol ink art. My favorite being graphics opaque white craft plastic because it's virtually stain proof, heat resistant, and better priced than lots of competitors' papers, which is why I always recommend it as your main white surface. Now, Graphics makes a black version of the same synthetic paper. Like the white version, Graphics Opaque Black is heat resistant, so you can safely use blow dryers without fear of it warping. The black version also cleans easily like the white. And lastly, it's the same low price as the white. This new black is great for alcohol ink. And it's also a wonderfully fun, versatile surface to use because unlike substrates such as black vinyl or black tile, this surface can accept pencils too. Now, if you're thinking, so what? Because you only use alcohol ink? I'm going to show you a new technique I've been working on that will give you a fun way to add blended translucent color to alcohol ink, and it involves using colored pencils. For this technique, we'll need a white alcohol ink, isopropyl alcohol, and soft core colored pencils. I highly recommend Marabou's white alcohol ink for this, because after trying all the other alcohol ink whites that I have, I found that Marabou's white created the smoothest translucent look when it gets thinned down with isopropyl alcohol. For the alcohol, I personally prefer 99% isopropyl because it dries faster on the surface and I'm impatient. <laughs> but I've also done this just as successfully with 91%. Um, so if that's what you can find, then that works just fine. And the advantage of 91% is it dries slower in your palette, so it evaporates slower. Now for the pencils, I have not tried this with other artist grade pencils other than Prismacolor but I do know that it does not work with student grade pencils like Crayola or Crazy Art or uh, I don't know, I can't think of other brands because the cores are usually too hard and the pigment load is a little too low for this, unfortunately. But honestly, I think having some Prismacolor pencils or any artist grade pencils is actually a good idea for alcohol ink. They actually can be used quite a bit for some really fun effects. For my composition, I've cut my plastic to nine by three inches, but make your piece whatever size suits you best. I'm starting out by sketching my design with a white colored pencil. A regular graphite number two works well too, but it doesn't show up well on camera. <laughs> So I'm using the white pencil so that you can see what I'm doing. I've chosen two tulips for my design and a couple of their leaves, but draw whatever makes you happy. Once I've finished my sketch, I have the option of leaving these lines, the bright white of the colored pencil, like the full intensity, but I'm going to soften the lines a bit by erasing them a little just leaving enough white behind so that I can see my design easily enough. Once I start adding white ink, you won't see the lines anymore. They will get completely covered up by the white ink. Now for my ink, I'm thinning it quite a bit. On average, about, I'm gonna say three drops of alcohol for every drop of white ink. This is something you will adjust as needed depending on the translucency or opacity that you want. 
So if there's a section that you want to have be more opaque, you'll add more ink. And if there's a section that you want to have even more translucent, add more alcohol. With my ink thinned, I begin to paint in my sections. I work with a fully wet brush. Don't skimp on the amount of ink you load onto your brush. You need not worry about the ink blooming or running away from you. It's gonna pretty much only go where you put it. I'm not sure why that is, but it's gonna be really well bathed. And keep in mind, the wetter the brush, the better. Also keep in mind that the ink will appear whiter when it goes down and become more translucent as it dries. So if you're thinking, oh my gosh, it's way too white when you put it down, give it a chance to dry before assuming you need to thin your ink because you might be really pleasantly surprised by the way that it does dry. Now, you see me skipping around on the painting. In other words, I'm not finishing one flower before starting work on another. I'm doing that in order to allow each section to dry before painting adjacent or overlapping areas. You also see me keeping my strokes moving lengthwise. Those are the keys for maintaining individual shapes and having them look as smooth as possible. And in this case, we're talking like the petals and soon we'll be doing the leaves and the stems. And this is why marabou white is ideal for this. Now, periodically, you may need to mix up a bit more thinned ink. And at this point, you can decide if you want thinner ink or thicker. Personally, I prefer a more translucent ink, so I go for a nice thinned down version so that I can get what I'm going to call like a, an x-ray look. I want to be able to see through each section to the ones beneath as much as possible. Every alcohol ink brand has their own uh, idiosyncratic properties and one of Marabou's is that it is more resistant to reactivation or re-wetting than other brands. So like some people are like, oh, I don't like Marabou because, you know, it's so hard to get it to move. Well, see, every ink does something different than another brand, which is why having a bunch of brands can be really good because you can do different things based on your needs with your different inks. So in this case, Marabou's resistance is ideal. It's allowing me to paint overlapping strokes while maintaining the borders of the previous ones underneath. And it's giving me that cool x-ray effect. Now, as I said earlier, while developing this technique, I tried other whites and none gave me this effect. In order to do it with other brands, I would need to use layering solution, you know, Kielty's layering solution between layers to prevent lower layers being reactivated when brushing on a new layer. Other alcohol ink whites have their strengths but for this, you'll want Marabou. After painting in all my petals and the leaves and stems, I let this fully dry before moving on to the next stage, which is color. <laughs> and it really doesn't take that long to dry at all because we've thinned the ink so much. But the little border lines, they're, they're like, yeah, you really want those to be totally, totally bone dry. So maybe give it a good 20 minutes to half an hour before moving on. I've pulled out a few different colors of Prismacolor Premier pencils. These have softer color cores and they work great for this. I have a couple of greens from a light chartreuse to a dark green. And I have a handful of colors for my petals. I want them to have a 
variegated ombre look, going from a golden yellow to a pinkish red. Now choose whatever colors make you happy. You don't need to blend varying colors, but I think it's especially pretty if you do. And I think it's also the best part of this technique as I hope you'll see as we go forward. For the lightest green, I place it on the edges of the leaves and stem where I imagine, you know, light or the sun would hit the flowers. Then I add darker greens for shading and definition. And um, I place the darkest green on either side of the stems so that on, on the leaves beneath the stems so that the stems can really stand out. And then the trick to this part, the coloring, is using your finger to blend the pencil. The white alcohol ink is going to stay intact. And the reason the pencil can add color this way is that the graphics black plastic, just like the white plastic, has just enough tooth to grab onto your thinned ink and the pencil. This couldn't work if you were doing this on something like vinyl or glass or glazed ceramic tile because those surfaces are slick and they have no tooth. So this is such a great project for this type of surface. I continue to add color and I blend it in periodically until I'm happy with the saturation. I kind of want the color to be bright, but I still want to allow the texture of the alcohol ink to show through. So I kind of want the best of both worlds. Now for the petals, I start with, in this case, canary yellow at the top of each petal, and then I follow it with a little bit of orange to help me transition to the pinky red that I chose, which in this case is process red. Now choose whichever colors make you happy or whichever colors work for your project. And then tell me in the comments which colors you would use if you were painting flowers. An advantage to coloring with colored pencil is that you have the opportunity to select light fast colors for your pieces. Alcohol inks aren't light fast and you know, we all kind of <laughs> have to live with that fact, but colored pencils, many of them are. And many of them are not just light fast, but very good in their light fast nature or even excellent. If this is an issue you care about, I've included a link to a light fast rating chart for the entire Prismacolor line. And I put that in the description box below the video, right underneath the links for the pencils if you're thinking of getting some. Now I'm doing a <laughs> it's a decent job, or at least as decent job as possible laying down my color but it doesn't need to be a perfect job because remember, I'm gonna be softening the pencil strokes and blending everything pretty much seamlessly with my finger. Every now and then I kind of leave a little texture cause I kind of like that, but you can really blend it all the way down so that there is no pencil texture showing. As before with the greenery, I add color as needed and I intensify some areas for, you know, more depth and dimension, that sort of thing. Now, you will get colored pencil on your fingers, but, you know, if you're not getting a little dirty, are you really immersed in making art? <laughs> I don't know. 
Like, I feel like I really made something when I can look at my hands or my work area or my, you know, my apron if I'm wearing one or whatever and kind of see, like, all my materials all over myself. <laughs> when you're done with all your coloring and blending, look over your piece for any, you know, boo-boos. Or maybe you're colored outside the lines a little. <laughs> or you kind of got a little crazy with the blending and blended well off the flower onto the black background. A simple soft eraser can remove all of that for you. So don't panic. It's really easy to get it off. And then all that's going to be left for you to do is admire your work. If you don't think you'll be framing your piece under glass, I'd recommend a quick coat of something like Kamar varnish to protect your piece from dust and abrasion. I hope you enjoyed this fairly simple technique. Let me know in the comments, and if you try it, I'd love to have you come show off your work in my Facebook group. Links for everything I used are in the description box below. May the inks be kind, may your creative natures shine, and may you and yours be healthy and safe. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye now.